Hello, this is Smilefox. Welcome back to another episode of Super Mario Odyssey. In this episode, we are going to continue playing, and we're starting off with the Metro Kingdom. So there's a giant caterpillar up there, and that's what we're after. Then before we go to the next kingdom, what we're going to end up doing is we're just going to end up doing what we need to, and that is go to the Cloud Kingdom again. Just so that we don't miss out on any power moons that we can get. So I might just leave Cloud Kingdom, it just depends. Like I'm not simply just going to go there. Unless of course I've got like spare time at the end of the video. Here we go. So what's today's non-binary topic? You may be wondering. So today's non-binary topic is um, one of my favourite ones, and that is. Is respect for non binary and trans people. The reason why having respect for non binary and trans people is important is because in the world, especially in some countries, Being non-binary can get you thrown in jail, and even in some countries it can get you killed. The problem with that is pretty much... Many countries where it is legal say it's for religious purposes. However... With culture in that, it should be frowned upon, but if you've got tourists and stuff, it shouldn't actually be something that we can use to like arrest you. Especially in the modern day and age. But that's the issue with being non-binary, as of pretty much some countries are, oh, well, ignorant of the fact that culture has changed and non-binary people exist. So many countries around the world actually have non-binary before the British colonised quite a lot of the world. But these cultures that have non-binary people, even if those known by different terms, have somehow somewhat kept it even if even if it's been outlawed in the country, they've tried to keep as much of it as they can. Because at the end of the day, you do need to respect non-binary people and trans people because they are some of like the customer base. If you're gonna be transphobic, you are gonna lose customers. So if I went to a shop and then they were very like horrible to me or treated me different because I'm non-binary, not in the way of like different pronouns, I mean as in different as in I 
using like slurs and that. I probably wouldn't go back to that restaurant or the um, shop or whatever place it is. Because it's not worth going to a place where you feel uncomfortable just for the purpose of. making your family happy. For example, there's many places where I won't eat. For my own reasons. I'm not going to get into all that though. But, pretty much. You should respect as many people as you can. Many business practices should be changed to accommodate trans and non binary people because many businesses many businesses lack the trans and non binary inclusion that companies should have nowadays. The reason why including non binary people is important, is important other than the fact that they are part of the customer base is also people need to learn it's all right to be okay. It's okay to be trans or non-binary because many places where um, transphobia is it can damage a trans or non-binary person because being told that what they are doesn't exist and all that. Or that, oh, you're as ball and a girl, so you have to always be a girl. That is wrong. Especially when you can just take a little bit of medication, which can easily change your hormones. Or you can get like laser hair removal surgery thing which it is time consuming but it works removes masculinity and I know that like some people having a beard who were born male but transitioned into female, pretty much that can cause serious dysphoria and so serious uncomfort. So refusing someone the support that they need just because you don't agree with it. Fair enough it's like if it's like something that has hurt someone, but yeah, I don't expect you to accept that, but accept them people for who they are. You should. There are many organisations as well says it's wrong to be gay. These organisations though usually have a hidden agenda. Like I'm not gonna get into all that though because Yeah, I could get hate and all that. I don't really want to get a lot of hate over a um, video where I'm talking about Trans people in there. Trying to nickel the thing. Yeah. So, with this, what we want to do is we want to shoot the light.
Although one rumour that has came out, which I don't think is true but would be funny if it was, is that um, Mario and Luigi were supposed to be in a gay relationship before it became Mario Brothers. Like, I think that is stupid because back when those games were released, there was actually no like queer culture. Because why not? But before I do that, I'm gonna find out where the Kingdom Hearts is on here. For me, I do like to film in bulk, that's why the dates are all super close yeah. to each other in these episodes. Unless I'm delayed for whatever reason. Yeah. <laughs> So it will be the um will be the um The only one that we're not going to do will be the jump rope challenge in this episode because the cheat you have to uh beat Alza to get the stuff that you need. There's, there's a moon in here called Mario Science's name, and the thing you capture for that is useful when trying to complete this um, level. Mainly because. Mainly because. You do require quite a lot of. Flat it is important to um, but it is important to collect as much as I can. So, see you there. 
Not later on or it's one of the special moments. I've seen um, some purples, but I'm going to go straight for them because I want to get the purples on this building here. Oh, I missed one. With me, with this game, New Donkey has always been the weirdest kingdom, and I've never been like the biggest fan of this one. Because. It's the only one that's not actually got a cartoony art style. Which is not bad for a Mario game, but. When you look at it, it is out of place. Just for one reason, and that is pretty much. It doesn't look like what you'd normally find in a Mario game. This is the slots again. Three moons just by doing the slot machine thing. There's one in each kingdom. Next one we're gonna get will be we're gonna do this one next year. We're just driving the little remote control car. There we go. I'll see car pro. Outside the rotating maze, and then we need to go and get the moon shards. And I'll finish this level. Yeah. 
Go here, get the moons. So yeah. One of the games which I'm very surprised with is Sonic Colors and uh, Sonic Colors Ultimate. Because there's um a non-binary kind of joke thing in it, but it's not like a horrible joke, it's actually a pretty good joke. Where Sonic, where Sonic is introduced to Yaka, the Wisp. They're the little aliens in that game, and um, pretty much Sonic's like a um, guy, gal, or whatever you are. So he's not assuming the cat's gender. Like, Yaka's gender is never found out. I like to think um, the wisps in that game are non binary. Just because they don't show gender traits at all. However, I think the reason why it will never ever ever be confirmed whether they are or not is because of the whole situation with non binary inclusion. Because until non-binary people are well fully accepted in society, pretty much there's not going to be many non-binary characters or anything like that. Because obviously, because obviously, if they did include as many non-binary characters as If pretty much everything including our bound characters, then yeah. So we need to go Light Kingdom and Wooded Kingdom now. So we'll go there in a bit, and we'll also go Cloud Kingdom. Because why not? Is it behind here? Nope. So we need to go in this room then. And then this takes us over to your place. Yep. Plus as well, with realistic humans in this game. I think this is the reason why I'm never, I've never been fussed on this kingdom is because just because of the people in it, like these people look out of place to the rest of the game. Like they look what you like you'd find in like a. Um, Realistic game, not a Super Mario game where the whole thing is basically look for um, moons in a fictional world. I get why they've done it, it's to show off the graphic capabilities and Switch. That's also why they made Breath of the Wild like it was. That's why they delayed it from the Wii U for the Switch, was they wanted to enhance the graphics to basically make it the best looking Zelda game that they ever made. Uh, 
I know the Switch isn't like the most powerful console or anything like that, but... But, visually, this game looks really good. Like, as a game... Mario Galaxy was one of the most impressive 3D Mario games, but after this one came out, Galaxy still looks really good, but not as good as this one. Mainly because Mario Galaxy is pretty much all about um, space, and that, and it's got the same theme, whereas this, because the amount of stuff in the game is so diverse. Pretty much. The game looks a lot better visually compared to something like Galaxy or Sunshine. Like, though Galaxy and Sunshine are both really good, we don't really need to be shown. There's one of the two rooms. In here. And now let's go back into here to try and get the other moon. As long as we get the moon, that's all that matters. There we go, we got it. Big jump escape, come on. This moon again. And now into here. Let's go and speak to the man now. Hi. Mm-hmm. Oh. And let's go and get the first band member. And then that will be it for this episode. So in the next one we will continue doing New Donk City. So thanks for watching this episode. And then in the next one, we will continue playing Super Mario Odyssey and we'll continue in this kingdom. Thanks for watching and bye!